transcribed. Family Theater presents Adolf Manjou and J. Carol Nash. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Two Tickets for Stockholm, starring J. Carol Nash. To introduce the drama, here is your host, Adolf Manjou. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama. Two tickets for Stockholm, starring J. Carol Nash as Jan Sabieski. First, let me say, my name is not Sobieski. It is something else, but I cannot say what, because we still have relatives in Poland. It would not be so good for them, you understand, if the communist knew my real name. I have a wife, Rhoda, and two children. I operated a bookstore. When I decided we must leave Poland, Michael was 15, Marilka 13. They were in danger of losing their souls. We were a happy family, just like everyone else around us, before the communists came. I remember. Jan? Yes, Rhoda? Are you alone? I am now. I would like to talk to you. Well, that is one of the privileges of a wife, even during business hours, especially when the shop is part of the house. Michael, Marilka, come with me. Now, what, what has happened to you two? Hmm. Little girl with a black eye and a boy with clothes that, that look as though he has been rolling in every street in Warsaw. Just look at him. Is this her way to come home from school? She started it. It's her fault. Well, Marilka? I didn't begin this one. What did begin it? Well, do you remember the wild rose bush you and Mommy brought home from the woods the last time we were on a picnic? The one we planted down by the fence, dear? Yes. Oh, Mommy, Mommy, the boys stamped on it and broke it all down. Why? Oh, they say we're old-fashioned because we believe in God. I see. Well, it's, it's a nice, comfortable way to be old-fashioned, I think. Oh, what can I tell them when they talk like that? Tell them you're proud to be old-fashioned because you understand why you are on earth and ask them if they do. Tell them it's nice to love God for it makes you feel all warm and kind and, and contented inside. And ask them if trampling on flowers and little girls' hearts do the same thing. Ask them if the greatest, most modern scientist in the whole world can make a rose to replace the one they destroyed. Tell them you don't want to be new-fashioned and smart if it means knowing nothing at all. I never thought about it that way. Neither did I. All right, well, now, run along and, and get cleaned up for supper. We, we can talk more about it then. Yes. Yes, Daddy. Oh, I wish the problems would always be that easy to solve. Oh, you're so wonderful with them. Well, I read too many books, and sometimes I, I talk like them. Jan. Yes? Can we always be this happy? Everything changes, Rhoda. All I can say is, we'll try. Where are you going? Well, I have just time to go down to the florist before supper. And if he doesn't have a wild rose bush, <laughs> I shall choke him. <laughs> <laughs> then came the communists. Overnight, almost everything changed. Oh, we tried to keep on being happy, but it was very hard. Rhoda and I didn't care so much about ourselves because we became filled with anxiety for the children. Almost immediately, they were, they were forced to attend ZMP, youth meetings. And within a few months, Rhoda, Michael, Marilka, it's a quarter to late. We'll be late for mass. Marilka, what, what, what are you doing in that uniform? Michael and I have to go to the youth center. But you cannot wear that dress at Mass. I'm not going to Mass. 
Not going? F- what are you saying? The time for the meetings have been changed to eight o'clock on Sunday morning. I'm not responsible for the change. Take off that uniform. I'm sorry, Father. Talk it over with our leader. If he says I can attend Mass instead of the meetings, I shall do so. Goodbye. That was the first big change. We tried to reason with both of them, but nothing helped. Then one day, Michael surprised me listening to a certain radio program. Michael, Michael, what, what, what are you doing, Michael? You know better than to listen to broadcasts like that. Michael, you, you speak like that to your father? I have no father where duty is concerned. So, so that is it. You have no father, no mother, no sister either, I suppose. Marilka feels as I do. I see. Oh, Michael. Michael, can't you see where this crazy communist teaching is leading you? I shall smash every radio in this house if I catch you listening to such trash again. I shall report you. It is my duty. I shall be glad to follow it. Your, your duty? You don't even understand the meaning of the word. I was reluctant to make an issue of what my children were doing for it might drive them, them, them completely away from me. Two weeks later, matters came to a head. Michael, what? What are you doing looking through my account books? I am copying down what I find there. Why? Need you ask? I demand an answer, Michael. Didn't you ever hear of the KWS? Oh, dear God. Michael, you, you don't belong to that. It is my privilege to do so. You need the evidence. To wreck my shop, is that it? You have resisted communization by the state. I have no other choice. Marilka, take this report to Adam Krasinski. He's waiting for it. Yes, Michael. Now, wait, wait. Rhoda, dear, neither Michael nor no Marilka is bad. Down underneath, they, they are bright and shining as they first were. It is only this, this layer of communist filth that must be cleaned off. And then their brightness will, will, will once more shine through. Uh, we will save them in spite of themselves. What are your plans, Jan? Well, Rhoda, school will be out in another week. I have rented a summer house on the Baltic seashore. We will go there as soon as we can. We will not be allowed to go. Yes, but, but I have a, a, a permit... All is in order since I promised the authorities to, to be a good party member. And once there, I, I shall rent a boat with a motor, put in provisions. The distance is not great across the channel to Sweden, so we, sh- we, we shall not have to take, to take very much. You don't know anything about a boat? No, but, but I, I shall learn. And, and, and we shall have a compass, and God will help us. And Michael? Well, Michael has always loved the sea. He will not learn the true reason for our excursion un- un- until it is too late. Where are we going in Sweden? Ah, that, that, is, that is where my real genius comes in. You and, and Marilka will go to Halsingsborg. Here, here, I have a letter from, from Vincent Kadlubleck, who went there last spring. How did you get such a letter through? Well, there are ways. And you will contact him as soon as you reach the city. But you must memorize his address and, and he will help you find work and, and rooms in which to live. But aren't you coming with us? Well, across the Baltic, yes. But, but not to Halsingsburg. It will not be good for Michael to be in a city where he can hear and, and talk politics. Vincent Kadlubleck helped me there, too. Through an employment bureau, he secured me a job as, as a woodcutter in the northern forests. Michael and I will go there by train as, as soon as we land. Oh, no. It is the only way. I have prayed and, and taught and, 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 and prayed some more and... Well, my mind is made up. Let Marilka and me go with you. Uh, to, to a lumber camp? There and... must be some other way, Jan. You're not used to work of that kind. It will kill you. If it will save Michael, it, it will be worth it. It is in God's hands. <laughs> took every cent we had to rent the beach house and get the boat ready. Neither Michael nor Marilka had any idea what was afoot until... Where are we going? Well, get into the boat. 
All right, now, now, now you, Michael. I am not going. What? I don't think this is a fishing trip. I think you are going to try to reach Sweden. Get into the boat. So this is why you took the summer house. I should have known you were a traitor all along. Who is Michael Little in this night air? If you think I should live in the thieves' society among those warmongers, you will think again. Please. No. What's going on here? Off the beach guard. Here, this way. What will we do? Throw the sack oh. over his head. The sack. Oh, the head, help. No. Hello? Come on. No, no, no. Help me get him into the boat. Yes, we will. Sit down, him. Stop. Sit down. Come on, here we go. Stop! That is how we left Poland. And like a storybook, we, we, we were almost caught. Well, Rhoda went to work as a waitress in a big restaurant in Hasingsburg, and, and Michael and I kept on going north. Michael was sullen and, and nasty and, and threatened to go back to Poland the first time he could escape me. But there was nothing for the time being that he could do, nothing really. The Swedish people would not help him. He had no money, so he had to go along with me. Berga was a very small community deep in the vast forests, high up in the mountains. Only woodcutters lived there. Most of them Swedes, some Norwegians, and some Finns. Michael and I were, were, were the only real foreigners. We reported for work as soon as we arrived. So, you are San Sobieski, hmm? Yes, that, that is correct. And this is your boy, hmm? Yes, sir. Give him a few months and he will be bigger than the daddy, hmm? <laughs> yes, he's a very big boy. That is good. I am Hjalmar Bostrom and I am the boss here. I understand. Uh, you will take orders from me. Yes, sir. It's always good to have these matters straight. As you will work together, you will live together. Yeah. There is a little cabin to the north of the settlement that you can have. Uh -huh. You will have to get your own meals. Uh, there are no cooks here. Oh, well, well that, that will be fine. Do you cook? No, no, but we will manage. Good. You will start work at five in the morning. Good night. Uh, good night. If you think I'm going to live here, you're crazy. There's nowhere you could go to. I won't work. Michael, I think, I think it is about time you and I get something straight, Michael. You are going to stay here, and you are going to work because, because there is nothing else for you to do. And if you don't, you'll starve, for no one is going to help you to leave here. Now, is, is that clear? I'll find a way. There will be no one to talk politics, no one to talk to you about them. And if you do find someone, he will hate the communists as much as I do. And it will be better for you to, to keep quiet. And I require only one thing of you. What is that? You will say your prayers every night before you get into that bed. And even if you, if you throw a prayer at God, he will hear it. Maybe he will help you in spite of yourself. And if I don't? You will. Now. Unpack your bag and, and let's get settled. Well, Michael did as he was told. He, he had ne never heard me speak like that before and, and it surprised him. Well, it surprised me too, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, the days began to go by. There was nothing but work, work, and, and more work beginning at five in the morning. Sobieski, stop work a moment. I want to talk to you. How long have you been here now? Hmm? Oh, well, well is, it, is it two months? Almost two months, exactly. You still handle that axe like it is a coffee pot. This work is no good for you, and you are no good for the work. No, but I can't. I won't leave here. I... <laughs> of course not. I merely need an accountant to keep my books. And you do that for me, hmm? Oh, gladly, gladly. Give me that axe then and get on with it before I change my mind. Yes, yes, sir. Now, Mr. Tree, I will chop you as you're supposed to be chopped. He didn't need a bookkeeper. He was, he was just being kind as, as was everyone else. They all wanted to help me and to help Michael. And as the weeks passed, Michael began to enjoy himself. <laughs> and then at Christmas, he, he spoke for the first time of his, of his mother and his sister. 
he said he he said he wished we could we could be together and then he went out and, and, and said no more about it. He spoke no more about Poland or the communist either. Then one evening when spring came, oh, you, you sent for me, Mr. Bostrom? I did. You sit down, please. Right. I wish to ask you a question. Oh, certainly. We have a new man here. He came last week. Oh, yeah, Pavel Thunberg, the Finn. I, I entered him on, on the payroll. He is no Finn. Well, what do you mean? He is Russian and a communist. Oh. He has been talking to the men. I see. He will not be allowed to stay, of course. Yes, but, but, but why you, you tell me? Michael is one of the men he has been talking to. Oh, oh well, it, it, it makes... Yes, it's no difference because Michael will, will have nothing to do with him. They have been together several times. Mr. Bustom, Michael and I are leaving here. I, I, I intended telling you later this evening. Oh. Where are you going? To Stockholm. We will meet the rest of our family there. It's too bad you can't go home. Well, makes no difference. Home, home is, is where you, your loved ones are. Have you told the boy yet? No, but I will tell him tonight. The best of luck to both of you, then. Uh, thank you. Sobieski. Yes? Uh, nothing. Good night. And as I walked back to the cabin, I was a bit angry with Bostrom for, for even thinking that, that Michael should listen to, to Pavel Thunberg. He was over that forever. But when I reached the cabin, Michael was not there. I learned that he had gone into the woods with Thunberg, so I followed. I tried to tell myself there was nothing to fear, nothing, nothing at all. Michael was over all his form of foolishness. All this was foolish, and all that was necessary was a little faith and enormous confidence. And I told myself I had both. I continue to search until presently... One day the communists will come here, as they will come everywhere in the world. And they will take over this country and these forests. If you will help me, I will see that you secure a fine position when it is all over. Oh, dear God. Why do you approach me? Come now, you are a Pole, are you not? I am. Your father once on the bookshop in Warsaw, and you were a member of the ZMP. Uh, how did you know that? Please, comrade, give the party credit for even simple intelligence. Now, you will help. I... I don't know. Well, it is impossible that you have forgotten the high principles for which we stand. You must remember all you have been taught about progress and modern thought. I shall have to think. I stood there for a moment, stunned at, at what I heard, and it seemed as though I couldn't move. Michael and the Finn went further into the forest talking, and then when I could, I followed them. I heard the sounds of fighting. Oh, yo. What are you doing? Michael! Michael! Michael, Michael let me help you! Stay back, Father! I can handle it! No. He, he is not dead. No, Michael. He's only knocked out. It is good. When he looked at these forests, he... He didn't see trees and lakes and hills and valleys. All he saw was how they could be converted into industry. That is the way communism is. And then I, I suddenly realized something. One cannot be a communist if one loves nature. And if one loves nature, one has to believe in the God who is responsible for it. <laughs> Do you know what made me realize that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. He... He stepped on a little wild rose bush, deliberately crushed it with his foot. And I remember that day back in Warsaw, outside the bookshop, when I gave Marilka the black eye and you talked to us. And I wanted to go back to that time again with all my heart. I will never again have anything to do with communism. Michael, Michael, I'm... I'm so proud of you. Here, Michael. What is that? Two tickets for Stockholm. Michael, we're going home. Well, that is all there is to tell. 
We now have a comfortable flat and I am a foreman in a store that, that sells farm equipment. Michael works with me and at night he goes to evening school. We are happy once more. And someday, perhaps, I will have a bookshop again in Poland when she is free. God is good. This is Adolf Manjou again. An early American pioneer, the founder of my home state of Pennsylvania, William Penn, once said, a people who will not be ruled by God will soon be ruled by tyrants. I think that sentence should be engraved on tablets or cut in stone or framed in a prominent place in every American home, particularly in these days when one third of the human race is either dominated already or else at death grips with atheistic communism. The story which we have just heard has made this very vivid and has also shown the intrinsic evil of a system which purposely corrupts the hearts and minds of youth. This was a true story, a story sent to family theater by the crusade for freedom, the independent movement of the American people that uses the weapon of truth to fight communism behind the Iron Curtain. The crusade for freedom heard this story from a Radio Free Europe correspondent who interviewed our Mr. Sobieski in Stockholm. It has been a privilege to cooperate with the crusade in bringing you this documented account of one father and mother who refused to let their children be enslaved, who fought for their children's minds, and who won that fight, principally by the motive, if not exclusively, by the means of prayer. Family theater's only purpose is to urge everyone to pray and to remind us all that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has presented two tickets for Stockholm, starring J. Carol Nash. Adolf Manjou was your host. Others in our cast were Irene Tedrow, Jill Oppenheim, Jack Crucian, Jack Lloyd, and Harold Dienforth. Two tickets for Stockholm, a true experience taken from the records of Crusade for Freedom, was adapted by Criffin J, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week. Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. Broadcasting System.